In lesson four, we'll be studying missing numbers in multiplication and division. Lesson three, we did missing numbers in addition and subtraction. And so again, the main thing we're doing here is finding the missing number. And the best way to understand how to do these problems is just to do several of them. And like in lesson three, one of the goals there was to see how addition and subtraction are related. Here, we're going to understand better how multiplication and division are related. So let's do this problem here. 3 times z equals 18. 3 times what equals 18? Anytime you have that number there, or that letter, that missing number that a letter is representing, instead of saying z, you can say what? 3 times z equals 18. 3 times what equals 18? Well, hopefully you know in your head already that 3 times 6 equals 18. So that answer is just z equals 6. Let's think about this, thinking about our fact families. How could we rewrite this to figure out what z is? Well, we could make 18 the dividend and 3 the divisor. 18 over 3 is 6. So that's always what you can do when you have a missing number in a multiplication problem. As long as it's not the product that's missing, you can do it like this. The product becomes the dividend, and the other number, the other factor that they gave you, that becomes the divisor. Let's try this problem. Remember, again, just to refresh your memory on problems like these where you have several of the same kind, pause the CD on the second one and the subsequent ones after that, and see if you can figure out those on your own before looking at the lesson. So we have c times 5 equals 35, or we can think to ourselves, what times 5 equals 35? Well, hopefully you know already that 7 times 5 equals 35, so you can just say that c equals 7. If you didn't know that, you can use your fact families and your relationship that, that you know. 35 divided by 5 equals 7, and so that's the other factor. That's what c would equal, is 7. Look at this problem. We have it in long division format. We know what the dividend is. We know what the quotient is. We don't know what the divisor is. So let's think about this. Remember, if you have long division format, you always multiply the divisor by what's in the quotient. So you can say what times d, or 7 times what equals 28. 7 times 4 equals 28. And we could rewrite that problem, 7 times d equals 28, and then we can just say d equals 4. Look at this problem, another division problem that's in long division format, and we don't know what the dividend is. Remember, the dividend is inside the division symbol there. 8 goes into what 6 times? Look at the previous problem. Look at practice problem C that we did. Now, what did we do there? We multiplied the quotient times the divisor. We know what our quotient is here. It's 6. We know what our divisor is. It's 8. And so that should equal our dividend, 48. And so that's what P is equal to. If you're getting confused about these division problems, it would be good for you to go back to page 8, look at that boxed area there, and see how they have the dividend divisor quotient and the different ways that you can write a division problem and how they have that written out there. Now look at this problem. Practice problem E. 11W equals 121. Well, what does that mean, 11W? Well, that means multiplication. Anytime you have a number next to a letter, that means multiplication. And so you're saying 11 times w equals 121. Now let's think about how we could figure out that unknown value. We would do this similar to problems a and b. Just because they look different, it's still a multiplication problem. And the unknown is one of the factors, just like in problem a and problem b. And so what we can do is we can take the product 121 divided by 11, and let's use long division format here. 
And maybe you already know this, that 11 times 11 is equal to 121. But let's go ahead and just do the long division on it. 11 times 1 is 11. 12 minus 11 is 1. Bring a 1 down. And then we have a 1 again. 11 minus 11 is 0. And so that is our answer. W equals 11. Let's do a few more of these. Look at this problem. 65 equals 13F. Remember, that means 13 times F. So you're saying 13 times what equals 65? Well, maybe you already know in your head that 13 times 5 equals 65. So you could just write the answer down right there. If you're not sure, this problem is confusing you. It looks a little, little bit different. The product is on the left side this time instead of the right side. It doesn't matter which side the product is on. You still do it the same way. We make this into a division problem. 13 goes into 65 how many times? And that would be 5 times. And so that's our answer. F is equal to 5. Look at this problem. 250 divided by G equals 25. Or 250 divided by what equals 25? Well, again, maybe you could do that one in your head. You would maybe see that 250 divided by 10 is equal to 25. Or you can think about your fact families. Just rearrange this problem. And we'll do 250 divided by 25, and that would give us G. And so we'll have 25. 250 there. 25 goes into 25 one time. And bring 25 down. Carry that 0. 25 goes into 0 zero times. And so that's our answer. G is equal to 10. Let's try one more. H over 16 is equal to 3. So this time we're trying to figure out our dividend. We can think, well, 16 goes into what three times? Our quotient is 3. 16 goes into what three times? Think about what we're saying there, three times. So we're really saying 16 times 3. That's going to be our dividend. And so 16 times 3, that's equal to 48. 16 goes into 48 three times. And so that's our answer. So we've done a problem like that before. When you don't know what your dividend is, you can multiply the quotient times the divisor. And that gives you the dividend. Quotient times divisor gives you the dividend. And that's another way that multiplication and division are related. Okay, well that's all for lesson four.